ClickUp's a great tool. You can get all the things that we just talked about. You can come up with a system to make work, whether you're using Teamwork or Asana plus Harvest. You can do a lot of this stuff. It's way less dependent on the tool than kind of the, do we have a clear idea of what the metrics we need on the back end are? Do we have the right data in place? Do we have the right processes built? Is the team trained and held accountable? And do we have strong habits in place? I think ClickUp's for most agencies, the fastest way to get to that, which is why we exclusively work on it. But it's not a ClickUp by itself isn't the nirvana that gives that to you. Welcome to the Happy Clients Podcast, brought to you by Dot and Company. Whether you're a virtual assistant, an agency owner, or a client-facing account manager, we all deal with clients. Lucky for you, client management is what we do best. Now, let's dig in. Chat cam life and have some fun along the way. Here's to Happy Clients. Why don't you start by telling us about you, Zen Pilot, and how you got to be here? Yeah. So I'm an ex-agency owner. Uh, 11 years ago, Andrew, my business partner, and I started an agency called Guava Box. No real meaning behind the name. It's the unique name that we could own on the internet. Ran the agency for a couple of years, scaled it up. We were hitting um, around a dozen people, struggled with all the project management tools, tried what felt like everything on the market. We were using Basecamp. And uh, remember a tool called Podio from way back in the day? I remember hearing about that. Cit Citrix wound up acquiring them, but that was maybe the most, the farthest along that we got. And it tried just about everything else, you know, the teamwork and Asanas and all those platforms. Wound up deciding to start our own internally for ourselves, our own project management platform. Went to HubSpot's inbound conference, um, 2012, for sure, 2013. Can't remember which one. And everybody was struggling with the same problem. So we decided, hey, we'll roll this out for other people too. So we built that into a tool called Do Inbound. Software as a service project management platform. Uh, our value prop was it's agency specifically for agencies. The big unlock for us as we were scaling things up at Guava Box was making the process live where the work gets done was the, the, the core principle. So the process we want people to follow right in front of them in their task list. So do inbound was our attempt at that. A lot of agencies really liked it for that. A lot of the pre-built processes that we included also really helped them kind of quickly get the process built that they normally didn't have. Or didn't have documented. Uh, we bootstrapped that business, put a couple million dollars into growing that out over the next four years, took all our best people from the agency and built there. And what we found was the software by itself wasn't fundamentally fixing the process problem for clients. So we started doing consulting on the side and consulting just kind of blew up and became, that was where all the best client results came from was obviously clients who worked with us as well to take a lot of what we'd learned at our own agency and helping other agencies. Anyways, long story short, that wound up leading us into the identity crisis of, are we a SaaS company? Are we a SaaS company or are we a training and consulting business? We wound up trying to still solve the same problem we've been working on since 2013, but transitioning out of our software, we're a little over 500 clients that were customers that we had to figure out a place to go. So we wound up partnering up with ClickUp kind of after doing six months of research and going through 71 different tools, early 2018 partnered with ClickUp. And so for the last four years, and kind of tie a bow on it, we've been working with agencies to help them streamline their operations in ClickUp. So that's all that we do today. There's a lot of tangential pieces to that, but everything revolves around helping agencies build more healthy, profitable, productive teams in ClickUp. So being a training manager and getting like an insight into so many different types of agencies, I've seen all the project management softwares as well. Yep. And it's hard because I obviously have favorites and other people have their own favorites and there's so many strengths and kind of setbacks with each one. Why ClickUp? Why was that the one that you're like, okay, this is it? We're ClickUp's largest implementation partner today. We worked with a little over 2,400 agencies. So if anyone should be a ClickUp fanboy, like it's probably me. I and mean, there's some easy reasons to eliminate ClickUp from consideration for agencies. So it's not the fit for every single agency. <laughs> The things that we loved about it back then and that they've delivered on in a big way are the flexibility and the depth of the hierarchy. So if you think of a client services business, like an agency, obviously you've got your clients inside of those clients, you've got projects, you got campaigns, you've got deliverables that have to get out the door. You got tasks, you've got kind of the process for how that all gets delivered. When you look at a tool like Asana, that's very flat or Trello or a base camp that's very flat, it's really hard to have that cascading level of detail so that I'm able to go into that depth and kind of break big things down into small, what do we need to do today pieces. 
Uh, so ClickUp fit that well from a hierarchy perspective and had a lot of flexibility in terms of the data structure. The key with any tool is like what we should be getting insights from the work that we're doing. We're doing all this crazy busy work. Like what are we learning from that? And so the data structure and ClickUp between custom fields and the flexibility and the hierarchy was really powerful. And then the other piece that tied into it well was their development velocity. And this is still the piece that I'd bet on for ClickUp today, which is they clearly, I mean, if you look at ClickUp's the momentum leader in the project management space right now, the fastest growing tool for agencies in the project management space, like they are pushing out features and improving the product at a faster rate than anybody else in the space. And so that was hard to know at the time. That was a bet on the Zeb and Wes and Chris and the founding team at ClickUp that they could continue that and had the mindset to continue that, but they've delivered on that in a big way. And I'm so optimistic about that kind of moving forward from here. Mm -hmm. Tell me more about the hierarchy. Do you mean like tasks and subtasks and subtasks within the subtasks? Yeah, or? exactly. Yeah. I think probably like Asana, probably everyone's been inside Asana at some point. So you've got your different projects. Obviously you get the global, Hey, we've got our workspace. Then you've got projects. Then you've got kind of these dividers or sections. But then you're right into tasks and subtasks and however you want to nest it. ClickUp goes same workspace, global level, then into these things. And ClickUp's names are really nebulous because they're trying to fit a tool. It's not custom built just for agencies, but spaces into folders, into these lists, and then into tasks and subtasks. And it all becomes the same at that point. So I think like high level, if we look at an agency, there's three main components. There's the growth, which is your client acquisition. There's delivery, which is your client services. And everyone's got a different name for all these areas, but this is our framework, growth, delivery, and operations, which is your back end, people, culture, HR, legal, finance, um, that kind of stuff. I'd like to be able to have our work all categorized and living inside one tool and be able to pull back reports on all those areas. So if we break that into the space level and click up, then inside delivery, that's where all our client folders would go inside each of those client folders. Now we still have lists, so we can create kind of service line um, allocations or campaign allocations, and then get into the actual tasks and the subtasks beneath that. I love that organization piece. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, just the levels that that may have. It's not something, I think running the SaaS business prior to what we're doing now, it was not the same thing. We've got one core code base that needs to get maintained and built and, and improved on. There's the, the product side but we didn't have sub clients beneath that or sub like campaigns beneath that. We're in a client services business. It's totally different and more layers of hierarchy are helpful. Speaking of which, do you think you could give us a little demo of maybe an onboarding or just a run through of some of your high level recommendations? Yeah, for sure. Okay. So kind of back to that point, just to give a quick visual growth, delivery operations inside delivery, we've got clients inside that you might have your service lines. If we're looking at onboarding specifically, obviously, so this is kind of merging a couple of things that we just hit on the process living where the work gets done. It's very common. I'm sure you've seen this a ton inside agency PM platforms, like client onboarding is the task, like go do a client onboarding and that's a great start, but what is that? Like what actually goes into that? And I know you guys have uh, training and templates and some thought around what onboarding looks like. So in our model, client onboarding is kind of the parent. This is what needs to happen, the deliverable or the milestone in the relationship. Beneath that, we've got each of the individually owned tasks that need to happen as part of that. And so our rule of thumb here for these subtasks is one person, one sitting, the buck's got to stop somewhere. So it gets assigned to one person and it's whatever they'd accomplish normally in a single sitting. So I might do the same person in sales might confirm that the invoice was paid, but they might not send the welcome email until whenever, you know, this stuff might happen together, might happen separated out. So we can nitpick in terms of should this be separated or not separated, but kind of breaking this out by, by when these tasks would normally happen. And then in terms of building the process into what happens, like if we're giving our strategy, you know, the sales team is closing the client, confirming that things are paid and sending a welcome email. And there's the handoff point from sales to the strategist or account manager role. How does that account manager or strategist then reply and what are they sending? Obviously this should be an email template that also lives in your CRM or lives in wherever you're going to send this from, but they should have all the context right here in terms of, okay, here's the email that I'm going to reply to. Here's what I'm going to say. And here's my checklist for how that gets done. I can track my time. I can do all the things that I would normally do in a project management system here, but that's kind of a high level over, you know, happy to walk through the individual steps here if you want to. I love the granularity that you have this built out as, because that's one of my main recommendations for agencies to build out the descriptions 
in each task. So the email templates, what to do when, and especially like when to complete the task. Because to me, ClickUp's almost like a combination of like Notion, Teamwork, Asana. Would you agree with that? It's kind of like a hybrid. I think you're seeing the same thing from a lot of the tools. Monday is trying to rebrand as like, hey, we're a work management tool, not a project management tool. I think there's an element for ClickUp that's going the same direction of, you know, hey, we've got docs and that's the Notion competitor mm -hmm. and we've got forms and that's type, you know, most of the tools have type forms or we have whiteboard and that's the Miro competitor and just like a lot of these different pieces of the process that it's definitely merging a lot of things together. And that's kind of in line with the mission from early on. If I was building, maybe even investing, I'm not sure that with a, like with a normal team, I would not be a big fan of that. I think ClickUp's gotten far enough and had enough traction that I would rather, I guess my nitpicky uh, distinction would be like, I want ClickUp to be the tool that connects a lot of those tools together and the core stuff. That's great. If they build in, I don't need them to replace QuickBooks online and whatever, like I just need the core project management stuff here and then strong connections to other platforms, but they definitely have a wider vision than I would have for just a PM tool. Mm -hmm. And then something that stands out to me is the time estimate involved. So is that something that you add on to each task? And then can you see the time that it's taking for each individual team member to actually complete those? Yeah. And I think the same thing. So regardless if we're doing SEO or we're doing a website or whatever else we're doing, you know, hey, we've got our estimates for how long this total SEO audit ought to take and how long each of these uh, pieces should take. Now in the day-to-day, -day, I think you have to be careful with team members that, you know, now I'm, I'm looking at, okay, we've taken all these templates, we've built it out for live clients, those due dates and kind of the due date mapping helps us quickly reassign due dates so that they're as accurate as they can be. They may need to be tweaked depending on who's in and out, but we've got a really good starting point. Now team members are interfacing with it in kind of a, you know, my task type of view in the day-to-day, -day. here's all my work across the entire team. I think the thing you, you've got to be clear to people about is that's just a time estimate. That's not, don't enter that as time track. Like some days it'll be over, some days it'll be under. Some projects will take a lot longer. Some projects will take shorter. That's fine. But yeah, team members will definitely track their time in here. And then from an analysis perspective, obviously what we're looking at from a profitability perspective for agencies is I want to be able to know how much time is going in on a client by client basis. And if we look at like a quick dashboard, you know, how much time do we estimate over last month or last quarter? for a specific client versus how much time actually got spent on them. You know, obviously who has time going where, what's billable, what's not billable. How are that, those breakdowns happen in terms of team members, how much was estimated versus tracks. This is where that data structure becomes really important. Like what attributes tied to time entries do we have so that we can pull back whatever data we need. And ideally I want to be able to see how much time do we estimate and track by client by service line and then by team member as the three main vectors. Tell us a bit more about the dashboards that you might share with internal team members or with agencies, what that kind of looks like. Dashboards in ClickUp, I think they're moving towards a world where there's more templates, but kind of getting into ClickUp out of the gate, you're starting from scratch with a blank dashboard possibility. Dashboards are one of the uh, most underutilized features of ClickUp for most teams, mostly because the input dashboards are really only helpful if you've got the right structure to pull reporting back off and then people are actually updating the data correctly. But some of the common pieces that people will use, you know, whether it's like a personal dashboard or variant of this for a, a pod or a department internally that I want to be able to see, or if I want to see an overview of how specific clients are performing and where we are in terms of progress or what's been done or a time estimated and time track. It's one of the most powerful features in ClickUp, as long as the prerequisites are there to be able to pull back. So it really comes down to identifying what information do we need to see, or even something like this kind of account dashboard. We should have a way to track kind of where every active project right now is from a status perspective, kind of who's responsible for it, what service lines that client, what services that client receives, what the target is for that specific client, a standardized way. I'm sure you guys train account managers on this kind of the feedback loop, like how are accounts doing? What's the metric for how we grade those accounts, how we give account managers a way to give us kind of a standardized update on a weekly or biweekly basis of how that account is doing. Yeah. This is beautiful, by the way. <laughs> it's so built out and so granular. Quick question. 
Do you find it hard? So you're working with agencies to develop these dashboards and SOPs and all that stuff. How do you find the buy-in from team members who are actually using this on a day-to-day basis, such as a client account manager? I think with no process, it's really hard to get buy-in. I think then you've got the people who are naturally tech savvy, who love it and they want to go explore and that turns into everyone kind of doing it their own way. And then you've got the people who don't want to be bothered and they'll just continue to do their work in Slack or communicate wherever they normally do it. Uh, But with a clear process, I think a couple just kind of general principles, agencies for whatever reason are filled with a lot of softies. So there's a lot of people who are just too nice in terms of, and I don't know if it's necessarily nice. I think sometimes it is a combination of like, we have a lot of people who are in marketing and who are conflict averse and don't want to hold people to standards. I think often though, it's just a lack of confidence in the standards that we have. Like, do I have the right standards to hold people to? I think buy-in from team members comes down to empowering them, giving them here's clear rules of engagement. How are we going to work together? And here's training on what that's going to look like specifically. And then accountability. So how do we then hold them to that and have a standard uh, kind of measuring uh, way to measure and then way to follow up on that. And a couple pieces, if I pull up my screen again and just share, I think from a training perspective, any team who we work with, we'll put every single team member full-time or part-time through basically, Hey, here's what you need to know. Here's the crash course to click up specifically, depending on whether you're familiar with it or brand new to it in your specific model of how ClickUp's going to work. Here's the rules of engagement that you have to follow. The really simplified expectations. What do you do when a task is overdue? Is that okay or not? Okay. Are you allowed to just move dates whenever you want to? If you do, do you have to leave a comment or do you not leave a comment? Do you have to track time or not? How do time estimates, you know, like what are the things you need to know? And then kind of walking them through, okay, here's what it looks like to build healthy habits. And so giving them some of this kind of basic training and information about how they need to interface with it. And then from an accountability perspective. Having standard routines is really important. You know, somebody internally should be running a daily spot check and there's a separate set of things that we're looking at on a weekly basis and on a monthly basis where we're, we're looking more at trends and kind of how do we make better decisions to improve the system moving forward. But those kind of the training and then the accountability have to get paired together. I think to make sure that everybody on the team can buy in, understands the why, and it's both the carrot and the stick of here's the vision for a brighter tomorrow and a better future where we all have clarity on what we're doing. And I have clarity from an executive layer of what needs to happen. And you have clarity in terms of what's on your plate in the day to day. But then the stick is that you also have to fall in line with the, with the standard rules and how we're going to operate as a team. What would you say with that? Like kind of the accountability piece, like what are the biggest challenges with that, that you're seeing maybe at a team level or just an organization level? So there's always imposter syndrome. If an agency owner is the one running the spot check or weekly roundup, We'll try to talk people out of that. Like that's a, a hard and fast rule. If anyone's going to work with us in a larger engagement, the rule is the agency owner is not allowed to be the person who's doing it. A lot of early stage agencies don't have somebody else. The reality is agency owners, I think every business owner, it's very unusual that they will get all their work into the system. They're scattered. They're running a million different things. And it's really easy. And I appreciate this because I feel the same way. How am I going to ask my team to do something that I'm not willing to do? And so that holds back a lot of entrepreneurs from actually building any standards because they're like, no, I'm scattered and disorganized. I'm a creative person. Therefore, I can't hold my team accountable to a standard that we're not going to operate that way as a team. So that just like from a mindset perspective, that holds a lot of people back. Outside of that, it's largely like, do we have a structure and do we, do we have confidence in what the rules should be and um, and holding people accountable? And then occasionally this does not happen that frequently, but Sometimes you run into a situation where there's somebody who just does not, like they don't buy in, they still don't want to do it. And they kind of, they've normally been around for a while. They know that they're, have a high skill set in comparison to the rest of the team. And so they'll push the limit and be the talented athlete who decides to throw a fit and like, you figure out what you want to do. Do you know how I'm going to play here or not? And so I think getting to that point as an agency of, no, these standards are not too crazy. These are not too stringent. And this is just standard stuff that everyone should do. If you want to work here, this is what you will do, or you won't work here. And so that does occasionally happen, but that's certainly the minority of cases. I hear that a lot too on calls with agencies. They're like, we want to bring you in as an account manager, but we don't have any systems set up. Or will you guys tell us what's wrong with our systems? Or they're just not confident in what they've built. Yeah. 
everyone knows, like you've heard it from everybody who's built an agency, like, oh, invest in your process. You have to have strong processes and it's process. And pe like the people will constantly change. The process is what you have. And that's the long-term formula to success. But it's one of those things where the ROI, it's not a short feedback loop. You don't get instant feedback that, oh, this made everything better. You, you'll get some taste of that, but the return on that investment always accumulates over time. So it's very easy, especially early stage agencies to put off. Who would you say is the right person to kind of oversee the tasks? Cause I know you said maybe the agency owner isn't the best person, but who should be that lead? In a lot of agencies who are in that kind of 10 to 30 person range or a little less to maybe a little more, it'll be director of operations, COO, director of client success, somebody who's in that role, uh, sometimes a project manager. I care less about the specific job title than I care about the kind of the personality traits. So obviously hyper detail oriented is one. They've got to be the person who is the perfectionist who doesn't let anything slip through the cracks. They have to have some type of coaching mindset and they've got to be confident enough to be comfortable managing up and going back and saying, look, Taylor, you did not get your stuff done today. Like you told me when you said this was important and this was part of my job that I could hold you accountable. Like you're going to be held accountable too. That's an, a less common trait. So it's something that I think you have to specifically encourage in people and try and find somebody who shows some of that naturally. And then I think somebody who's also the kind of the fourth characteristic that I look for is someone who's comfortable in the tool. A lot of this early on with teams is coaching people through. It's not that they're trying to not comply with whatever the rules are, but there are questions. Oh, I didn't realize this task should go there versus here. Or I couldn't figure out how to get these recurring task settings. Right. So if you have somebody who's comfortable saying, oh, that's fine. Like I'll go figure it out and then I'll show you how this works. That's a big plus in that role. And then outside of those things, I mean, so it could be someone who's fractional, you know, on a part-time basis outside. I encourage teams wherever possible to bring that in-house. It's not a full-time position in a 15 person firm. That's probably like a 15 or 20 minute check a day. It's not a huge time commitment, but the more context that they have about what's going on with all our clients and how many of these things can I just solve without having to bring that back to an agency owner to ask questions for context, the more they're able to just deal with themselves. So. I, I like to have that be a full-time in-house person if possible. I mean, I see that being the client account manager, honestly, because I think that's the role that kind of is the glue with everything. And a big part of our role is actually managing other team members and that follow-up process. That's the biggest thing that I do every single day is follow up with team members, making sure that everything is on track with yeah. projects and with clients, especially. In terms of the challenges people might face, but what are the main benefits? Like, what do you see as the team rallies together and they're starting to build this out? I totally get how the ROI might be over time, but what are maybe the instant benefits that you're seeing as well? I'd say the fastest feedback loop for most teams comes from the process improvement side at the point in which they have to sit down and say, okay, here's our documented template for how we're going to do onboarding. This just happened with an agency based out of Georgia. This is kind of the first time it sat down and they're like, okay, we have to put something on paper here and improvements naturally are going to happen to that when you actually have to take a minute, take half a day or whatever to build out a lot of these processes. And then, so they got feedback from a client almost right away, just saying how good the, the onboarding process was compared to their agency experience in the past. And it wasn't like we see hundreds of agencies every year, like it wasn't the best onboarding process or the most thorough onboarding process I've ever seen, but a big step up and a big step up over most of the competition. Uh, out there. So that's one of the typically short-term wins is just a lot of the Facebook agencies or e-com agencies. We see a huge amount of variance in the skill of the best media buyer versus the worst me media buyer internally. There's typically very little process. And some of that's, you know, the skill of somebody junior coming on is often directly correlated to who was the person who got assigned to train them. It's not a cumulative knowledge from the team. It's, Hey, this one person trained them. So they do things the way that one person trained them and someone else got trained by someone else. So they have totally different habits internally. So the process improvement is a big one. Team members from the individual contributor layer love having clarity in terms of what's expected from me. How do I say today was a win or not a win? It feels like an overwhelming weight in any agency when there's no structure of there's always a ton to get built out versus, Hey, here's what's on your plate for today. Like get that done. And today's now a win and anything extra is gravy. And then I think from the almost always from a management layer, it's the first time that agency owners, if we're working with a client, it's almost always the first time 
that they've had like significant insights into where we are. Everyone's got a hunch. Oh, this is my least profitable client. This is my most profitable client, but actual data into where they're making or losing money and how do we go get rid of or increase prices on non-profitable clients and how do we go clone our best clients? I mean, then figuring out why is that happening? Is that because we spend way more time on organic social than we ought to, than what we've estimated? Or is that because of, you know, this client just has a ton of headaches and one-off tasks? Um, or is this team member really slow on the specific project? So knowing how to make those decisions, that takes a little bit longer. That's not the instant like process win. That's the first time you're in that monthly review or second time or third time. But those are the upsides, some of the immediate short-term benefits of the system. Emma, did you have any other questions like specifically about ClickUp? I think so. No, I, I think one that comes to mind is that a lot of people do like to switch between platforms, but I feel like we've hit on the benefits of ClickUp and why it works and how it works. So I feel like that question is already answered. Yeah, I think just to tie a bow on that, like ClickUp's a great tool. You can get all the things that we just talked about. You can come up with a system to make work, whether you're using Teamwork or Asana plus Harvest, or you can do a lot of this stuff. It's way less dependent on the tool than kind of the, do we have a clear idea of what the metrics we need on the back end are? Do we have the right data in place? Do we have the right processes built as a team trained and held accountable? And do we have strong habits in place? I think ClickUp's for most agencies, the fastest way to get to that, which is why we exclusively work on it, but it's not a ClickUp by itself isn't the nirvana that gives that to you. Mm -hmm. I love that. Cool. Well, how can people learn more about what you guys are up to at Zen Pilot and get your support, whether you're new to ClickUp or moving to ClickUp? Uh, the website's just zenpilot.com. I think a couple of things that may be helpful if anybody searches ClickUp for agencies, if they're curious about that specifically, uh, ClickUp pulled me in to do a webinar for them. So that'll be one of the top YouTube videos, or there's a long post on our site called the definitive guide to ClickUp for agencies. That would be helpful. And then if anyone's interested in getting the onboarding template that we walk through, they just go to zenpilot.com slash OT. Um, that'll take you to the place where you can download it, plug it right into your ClickUp portal, or you can spin up a new trial and uh, try it out inside ClickUp. Even if you take the process and plug it into whatever your current PM is, or use that as just a starting point. Here's a reference point as we're calibrating what our onboarding process looks like. Um, and then if folks want to talk to us directly, zenpilot.com slash call is a easy link to book a call with our team. Amazing. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast. This was super helpful. I know for Emma and I, because we're diving into ClickUp. So thank you so much for all of your insights and giving us a sneak peek into your business. Yeah. Thanks for having me on. This was fun. Cheers to happy clients.